What creature grows teeth before it even hatches? And why is my jar already shaking on day zero? Inside the jar, hundreds of eggs drift like silent storms, each hiding something far more aggressive than it appears. Their membranes pulse in perfect rhythm, as if the entire swarm shares a single heartbeat preparing to break free. I added warm water to trigger hatching, instantly turning the jar into a swirling vortex of awakening life. The eggs began vibrating so aggressively that I thought the jar would crack before anything even emerged. Then, a razor-thin appendage sliced through the membrane, far faster than any aquatic hatchling should move. Within seconds, dozens burst open, filling the jar with translucent bodies darting like underwater sparks. They organized into a spiral formation, reacting as one, as though driven by an unseen instinct. Under magnification, tiny jaw plates appeared, far too developed for newborns, built for tearing rather than grazing. They accelerated so quickly my camera struggled to follow, leaving streaks of motion through the murky water. I added microalgae, hoping it would keep them busy, but the moment it hit the water, everything changed. They descended like a miniature storm, shredding the algae cloud faster than I could blink. The water clouded instantly, and a strange vibration rippled through the jar, almost like a warning. Hours later, they were already twice the size. Growth this fast shouldn't be biologically possible. But one separated from the swarm, hiding in the shadows, as if preparing for something bigger. Its skin split open with a violent jolt, revealing a larger, darker form beneath. The creature that crawled out looked nothing like the others. Larger, sharper, built for hunting. It moved silently through the water, each motion deliberate, as if choosing its first victim. The swarm sensed it and exploded away in all directions, filling the jar with panic. With one impossible burst of speed, it struck ending the first life in my jar within a heartbeat. The cocoon flexed again, releasing a ripple that crawled across the jar like something alive beneath the surface. Under magnification, tiny serrated growths appeared, its mouth forming long before the creature itself emerged. A sudden shift in the sediment signaled movement deep within the nutrient bed I thought was stable. A pale limb pushed outward, stretching the membrane thin enough to show veins pulsing underneath. A single air bubble vanished into its forming body, its first breath inside a world barely large enough to contain it. A glowing fissure opened across the cocoon, each crack spreading with a sound far too loud for something so small. The armored segment slid free, glistening, reflecting the jar lights like polished obsidian. Six reflective lenses opened at once, adjusting rapidly as if calculating the boundaries of its tiny prison. It curled tightly, the way predators coil before launching into motion. With a sudden burst, the cocoon tore open, releasing the creature into open water. It accelerated instantly, faster than any early stage aquatic animal I've ever documented. It rammed the glass lightly, mapping the jar's limits with unnerving precision. A translucent layer drifted away from its body, revealing sharper features beneath. It detected the micro-prey and lunged with startling precision, slicing through the cloud like a razor. Particles vanished into rows of new teeth, confirming it was built for predation from the moment it hatched. Its abdomen glowed faintly, metabolizing the meal far faster than any normal aquatic organism. Each tail flick generated pressure waves strong enough to distort the jar's entire water column. Then it stopped and stared directly at the lens, as if aware it was being observed. In a blink, it vanished into the shadowed layer, moving faster than my camera could lock on. 
It began arranging debris in a perfect spiral. Behavior no one expected from a newborn predator. It lurked beneath drifting leaves, moving only when the smaller organisms swam too close for comfort. Even the tiniest prey sensed danger, clustering tightly as if numbers could save them. The beast lunged with impossible speed, collapsing the school in a single violent strike. All that remained were fragments, settling like ash after a microscopic storm. Digestion fueled rapid growth. Each meal reshaped its form into something fiercer. But the jar's oxygen plummeted. Life inside was suffocating faster than expected. The surface film thinned, signaling metabolic overload from the creature's explosive growth. It rose toward the top, gulping at the thin oxygen layer as desperation took hold. I inserted a micro-aeration tube, hoping to stabilize the ecosystem before collapse. Tiny bubbles drifted downward, bringing a temporary balance back into the jar. Revitalized, the creature resumed its patrol, moving with predatory purpose once again. New prey organisms multiplied rapidly, creating the perfect environment for explosive predation. It tore through the swarm with unmatched efficiency, feeding like a machine built only to conquer. The water clouded again, each kill releasing nutrients and debris too dense to clear naturally. Its body began pulsing violently, as though some hidden transformation was about to ignite. A thin membrane formed beneath its skin, early signs of the chrysalis stage approaching. It latched onto a submerged root, curling tightly as if bracing for metamorphosis. Layer by layer, the cocoon wrapped around it, sealing away the predator it once was. The jar fell silent, every reason, then it glowed, faint but rhythmic, signaling that whatever was inside was far from done. The beast launched forward instantly, jaws locking onto moving shadows, its predatory reflexes now impossibly fast. Smaller organisms panicked, scattering in spirals as the ecosystem reshaped itself to avoid the growing hunter. Its exoskeleton thickened into armored plates, giving the creature a shape that looked engineered for dominance. A cloud of debris signaled another molt, the beast shedding weakness as it prepared for a new growth phase. It bit down on a pebble, cracking it cleanly, proof its jaw strength had doubled in a single night. The prey adapted too, forming a synchronized defensive cluster, like a living shield against the predator. The beast circled them methodically, calculating weaknesses the way a seasoned hunter would study its prey. But oxygen levels began to fall, turning the jar into a pressure chamber none of them were prepared for. Even the predator weakened, movements dragging as the air thinned and its metabolism strained under the change. I installed a micro-aerator, hoping fresh oxygen would stabilize the collapsing ecosystem before it imploded. Within minutes, the beast jolted back to life, surging with renewed aggression as oxygen flooded the jar. The prey sensed danger instantly, erupting into chaotic motion as the predator regained full mobility. In a single motion, it rocketed toward the surface, proving its agility had reached a terrifying new level. Its movement spun the water into a vortex, dragging everything nearby into a tightening spiral. The smaller creatures fought the current, but the spiral tightened until escape became nearly impossible. The beast slashed through the vortex core, taking multiple prey in a single devastating strike. As the chaos settled, remnants drifted like dust, signaling just how violent the last hunt had been. Its abdomen bulged with food, its growth accelerating far beyond any natural rate I had documented. Light bent strangely across the jar, 
hinting at chemical shifts happening faster than expected. It curled into the shadows to rest, storing energy for whatever monstrous transformation came next. Its mandibles flexed in the shadows, signaling a new level of aggression I had never witnessed before. It burst upward and attacked the swarm with a speed so violent the water fractured into spiraling vortices. The prey scattered instantly, fleeing to the upper layer, as if sensing a predator they no longer had the strength to outrun. It twisted its long body, gaining traction in the water, its acceleration turning the jar into a violent whirlpool. With a single strike, it rammed into a helpless prey, the impact echoing like a pop against the glass. The creature tore into its meal, the prey dissolving so quickly it felt like watching digestion happen in real time. After the frenzy, it retreated to the corner, pulsing softly as if gathering energy for the next strike. Under the warm light, even its wounds healed at an unbelievable pace, hinting at a biology beyond anything familiar. Then, without warning, it launched upward again, its body slicing the water column with terrifying precision. A cornered cluster of prey trembled near the glass, boxed in by currents too strong for them to escape. The creature circled them with intelligent precision, as if calculating the exact moment to strike. It dove downward, dragging a spiraling trail behind it, the entire jar trembling with its force. A lone prey was caught in the vortex, frozen in its fate as the jaws of the beast locked around it. The tearing motion was brutal, reinforced by mandibles that could slice through nearly anything inside the jar. As it fed, its body began to swell, the glow beneath its skin intensified. Airline cracks formed along its skin, each one spreading with the unmistakable signs of a coming transformation. The water vibrated around it, rhythmic pulses radiating outward like signals sent to an unseen predator. It coiled defensively as silt rose from below, as if something bigger, or worse, was waking beneath it. Then, slowly, its outer shell peeled away, revealing a new form. Its armor glinted under the light, plates hardened like steel yet flexible enough to bend with predatory grace. It jolted forward with impossible speed, slicing through the jar like a blade cutting through silk. The last remaining prey cowered beneath debris, their tiny bodies trembling as the predator searched above. It scanned the jar slowly, aware of every movement, as though the glass walls were no longer boundaries. Then it turned toward me, pressing close to the lens, as if recognizing the Watcher who created its world. Its gills snapped open violently, forcing currents outward like a creature ready to claim absolute dominance. The jar erupted into a miniature storm, spirals spinning so fast the water blurred into streaks. It struck again and again, every lunge sharper than the last, driven by a hunger I could no longer control. Stress lines stretched across the glass, threatening to split open and unleash a creature that should never touch open air. Then, everything stopped. Movements, the water. It curled into a perfect sphere, compressing itself until glowing veins appeared across its entire body. The sphere exploded outward in a shockwave, rocking the jar and sending every loose particle airborne. From the glowing haze emerged its final form, larger, armor, and the other. Bioluminescent streaks traced along its body, pulsing like neural signals traveling through a living engine. It surveyed the jar, now too small for its new power, every movement calculated with unsettling intelligence. The final prey vanished in a single bite, leaving the jar silent. It's it floated near the surface, resting at last, unaware of the impossible journey that had shaped it. Its reflection shimmered on the glass wall, 
a reminder that this creature existed only because I dared to create it. The glow beneath its skin faded as the jar settled, its final transformation complete, and its story nearly over. In the end, raising a carnivorous water beast inside a jar became the strangest, most terrifying journey I have ever taken.